2022 has been a roller coaster year for the EV industry. Everyone from startups to the heavyweights have jumped onto the scene. From tractors all the way up to trucks, every single category is opening up, sales are shooting through the roof. But at the same time, a lot of safety issues have cropped up this year. Specifically, EVs catching fire. The government stepped right in and enforced a whole host of changes under AIS 156 and AIS 038. Now, these changes are going to be implemented in two phases, with the first phase going live by 1st of December this year, and the second phase going live by 31st March next year. Right? A lot of these changes predominantly have been on the battery pack. And as you may or may not know, a battery pack has three key layers. The foundation, which is the lithium ion cell, the intelligence layer, which is the BMS, and finally, the battery packaging, which is the mechanical structure that just houses everything in, right? Now, to talk us through these changes, what they mean for the industry, and what it could hold for the future of EV in India, we've got Arun and Rituraj who are going to talk us through it, right? So, Arun, tell us, TLDR, what are these changes and what does it mean for us? Broadly, two types of changes, right? Uh, design changes and process changes. Design changes are all about how do you design a battery pack and this is everything like you said the cells, the BMS, the mechanicals, the thermals. Uh, how do you all make that happen at the right standards to ensure safety and robustness. Got it. The second bit is on processes. How do you repeat that battery pack every single time, right? To ensure that every battery pack that goes out there in the field is safe and it is also the same battery pack that we that was designed in the first place. Right? Got it. So a lot of things around traceability of mm. hey, what cells are going into, into these battery packs, traceability around the components, traceability on data from the field. Right. Uh, also to ensure that if something does go wrong, that we are able to track and trace and identify the root and cause. And identify the root cause. Right? Exactly. Got so it. so so I, I think clearly are, I think I think most of the design changes are fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I think I think I think pretty much a lot of these design changes are things that good battery pack manufacturers already do. Right. Uh, so it sort of was a premium feature. Yeah. But now it becomes <laughs> Standard, hygiene. Yeah. Now it becomes hygiene. Yeah, got it. Uh, which, which is great, right? Uh, some of the process changes I think have been evolving. Uh, honestly, a lot of these changes were also, hey, it needs to be done by October 1st. It's sort <laughs> of, <laughs> which, is, which is hard. And now at least it's been uh, a little more breather to say, okay, December 1st and March 31st. Got it. Uh, it's not much time still, but but some of the process changes have been uh, improving and I think there's been a good healthy debate yeah. between the regulators and the industry saying, hey, some of this will affect profitability or scale or throughput or yeah. cost structures. Um, and and I, and I think that's a healthy debate. Uh, but pretty much every design change that's been enforced, we fully, fully align with. And I think something that we already do. Uh, Got it. And I think it's important that everyone in the industry is following it. Uh, from an industry point of view, this means that you're not going to have mom and pop shops anymore. Got it. You can't have a fly-by-night operator that's just buying cells, slapping on a random BMS, and so it's it, making batteries is no more an assembly problem statement. Right. Got it. Right. It's it's not like making soap. Uh, it's a deep R&D problem. Um, you need an R&D first approach uh, to be a competitive battery manufacturer. But forget competitive, to be a battery <laughs> manufacturer.